Tips and tricks in performing laparoscopic surgery, carbon dioxide insufflation, and the first troca insertion. Hello, my name is Dr. Selva. I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at Makota Medical Center, Malacca. This is my second video in the series entitled Tips and Tricks in Performing Laparoscopic Surgery in Gynecology. Today I'll be talking about carbon dioxide insufflation and insertion of the first troca during laparoscopic surgery. I already have a video entitled Complications in Laparoscopic Surgery and I will not repeat what I've already discussed in that video. I will discuss some of the questions frequently asked by my trainees and fellows on carbon dioxide insufflation and first troca insertion. Check your varies needle. This is an important step. The varis needle is made up of two parts, the outer sleeve and the spring-loaded inner sheath. The varis needle are of different lengths. Make sure you personally check that the insert and the sleeve matches. Sometimes the outer sleeve is assembled with the wrong length of the inner sleeve. It is very dangerous when the inner sheath is shorter than the outer sleeve as the outer sleeve is not protected by the inner sheath. Also make sure that the spring on the inner sheet works well before starting the surgery. What precautions should you take when placing the varis needle? If the patient has a midline incision or there is a suspicion of bowel adhesions at the umbilicus, do not place the varis needle in the umbilicus. Choose another method for insufflation, such as the palmas point. If you have chosen to place the varis needle at the umbilicus, then first make a small incision in the umbilicus. Take the following precautions. The patient must be in the supine position. Do not place the patient in the Trenelenburg position when placing the needle into the abdomen as this might confuse you on the direction of entry of the varis needle. In thin patients, place the needle at an angle of 45 degrees. In obese patients, place the needle perpendicular to the abdomen. As you push the needle in, you should have three clicks. The first is when you go through the fat tissue. The second is when you penetrate the rectus sheet. And third is when you pass the peritoneum. This may not be as clear in clinical practice. How do you know that the varis needle is in the peritoneal cavity and not in the bowel or subcutaneous tissue? There are several tests that can be done to ensure that the varis needle is in the correct place. They are aspiration test, injection of air, hanging drop test, hissing sound test, manometer test, needle flow test, percussion test, and sounding test. Aspiration test. Using an empty syringe, aspirate first. If nothing is aspirated, then you are either in the peritoneal cavity or the subcutaneous tissue. If you aspirate brownish fluid, you may be in the bowel. If you aspirate blood, you may be in a blood vessel. If you are in the peritoneal cavity, you should feel a negative pressure. If you don't get the feeling of a negative pressure, you may be in the subcutaneous space. Injection of air. I usually inject some air using the syringe into the varis needle. The air should flow in easily without any resistance if you are in the peritoneal cavity. I will then aspirate. If you still have a negative pressure, then you are in the peritoneal cavity. If you don't have the feeling of a negative pressure, then you are probably in the subcutaneous space. Hanging drop test. Using a syringe filled with water, Inject some water into the varis needle and then aspirate. If you aspirate fluid, then you are in the subcutaneous tissue. You can then place a drop of fluid on the varis needle and pull on the abdomen. With the negative pressure, the fluid will move down the varis needle into the abdomen, indicating that you are in the abdominal cavity. Hissing sound test. When you pull on the abdomen with the varis needle in place, if the varis needle is in the abdominal cavity, you may hear hissing sound of air being sucked into the abdomen by the negative pressure in the abdomen. Manometer test. 
Attach the gas tubing to the insufflator machine. Do not turn the machine on. Look at the pressure on the machine. Now pull on the abdomen and the pressure should reduce if the varice needle is in the correct place. Needle flow test. Once you are happy with the insertion of the varice needle, attach it to the insufflator and set the machine at 4 to 6 mm mercury with a gas flow of 1 litre per minute. If the resistance is high, then there is some obstruction inside the varice needle. Percussion test. Tap or percuss on the abdomen to see whether gas has gone into the abdominal cavity. Sounding test. Before placing the troca into the abdomen, you can do a test with a syringe attached to a needle and aspirate around the umbilicus. If you aspirate air into the syringe, then there are no bowel adherent to the umbilicus. What do you do if you accidentally insufflated the subcutaneous layer? This can be a very stressful situation. Sometimes you only realize it after placing the troca. The gas in the subcutaneous tissue is called subcutaneous emphysema. Remove the varice needle or the troca. Reinsert the varice needle, but you may not be able to penetrate into the peritoneal cavity because the peritoneum will be at a greater distance from the abdominal wall. You could try to use a longer varice needle and go perpendicular to the umbilicus into the abdominal cavity. You must be careful not to hit the aorta or vena cava. Aspirate and see that you are not aspirating blood. If there is a negative pressure, then you may be in the peritoneal cavity. If you are not sure, remove the varice needle. The next step is to either do an open laparoscopy or place the varice needle at the palmas point. Other more exotic methods are placing the varice needle through the vagina, through the posterior fornix into the pouch of Douglas, or even through the uterine cavity perforating the uterus. Once you have successfully placed the troca into the abdominal cavity, you may find that the peritoneum is hanging. Bubbles in the subcutaneous tissue may obscure the pelvic organs. You can wait and usually the increased intra-abdominal pressure caused by the carbon dioxide insufflation will push the peritoneum to the rectus muscle, pushing all the gas in the subcutaneous tissue out. If the gas is not pushed out, you can place the outer sleeve of the varice needle into the place where there is subcutaneous emphysema and the gas will leak out of the needle. How do you do insufflation through the palmas point? This is the costal margin and this is the mid-clavicular line. The palmas point is described as two finger breadths or three centimeters below the costal margin at the level of the mid-clavicular line. Before placing the varice needle here, make sure that the spleen is not enlarged and no surgery has been performed at this site. A small incision can be made here and then the varice needle is pushed into the abdominal cavity. It is recommended that a nasogastric tube be placed in the stomach if you are inserting a varice needle at the palmas point. This is because gas may be accidentally pushed into the stomach when intubation was done by the anesthetist and you don't want to place the varice needle into the stomach. I perform this procedure slightly differently. I prefer to make the incision just below the costal margin instead of two finger breads below the costal margin. The advantage of placing the varice needle here as opposed to the palmas point is that there will be lesser tenting of the skin and rectus sheath and so the varice needle can be pushed more easily than if it is inserted at the palmas point. Is open laparoscopy superior to the varice needle? In open laparoscopy, an incision is made in the umbilicus so that the rectus sheath and peritoneum is opened under direct vision. The troca is then inserted and then carbon dioxide insufflation is done. This is a method commonly used by the general surgeons. It has several advantages. The advantages of open laparoscopy are It is not a blind procedure. It is easy to learn and perform. There is less risk of hitting a major blood vessel, especially the aorta and vena cava. It does not decrease the incidence of bowel injury, but if it occurs, it can be seen immediately and repair can be done. The disadvantages are 
Leakage of gas may occur from the large incision. If this happens, a Hassan sleeve can be placed to plug the leak or a purse string incision can be made around the troca to tighten the rectus sheet around the troca. However, often the troca may slip into the abdomen and this can be irritating when performing difficult surgeries. The second disadvantage is that open laparoscopy can only be done in the umbilicus. In gynecology, the camera pod may be placed higher up above the umbilicus. It is difficult to do an open laparoscopy from this side. Which troca should I use? Disposable, reusable, optical, or tenamian? Choose what you are comfortable with. Some disposable trocas come with automatic retractable blades. These are convenient and safe but expensive. Optical trocas are nice. Here, a laparoscope is placed in the troca and then rotated into the abdominal cavity while looking at tissues that it penetrates. This can be used even without insufflation. Tenemian troca can also be used with direct vision as the troca passes into the tissues. Each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. I use a normal reusable troca. I open the valve that is for carbon dioxide insufflation. I push the troca slowly, rotating it to the left and to the right and into the abdomen until I hear a hissing sound of the gas leaking out of the troca. This indicates that the troca has just penetrated the rectus sheath. I then place the laparoscope and push the troca slowly past the rectus sheath and into the abdomen. These are some of my thoughts on carbon dioxide insufflation and first troca insertion. Please let me know if you have any other tips on this topic. Please click like if you have enjoyed this video. You can get more information about women's health in my webpage www.malakafertility.com or search hashtag laparoscopic tips. Thank you.